Now, in speaking uh, about uh, uh, a brother who has entered the ter chapter eternal, I want to uh, uh, talk about my little brother, Fred Fanning. One of the guys that I had met at Commerce became my roommate in the Sigma Chi house. He was a tennis player, an extremely handsome guy, which was fitting to be my, for him to be my roommate. His name was Fred Fanning, and uh, we had a lot of wonderful times together. Fred was an incredible personality. He was uh, an athlete. He was on the tennis team. He was really a nice-looking guy. But his greatest asset was his charisma. Everybody liked Fred. I remember that Fred was teaching school. He had a, a wife and child and was drafted and sent to Vietnam. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a difficult time in college because we were all kind of hustling around figuring out are we going to Nam? Are we not? What's, what's, what's coming up? Uh, Fred Fanning and I were very close. Uh, uh, he was very close, played tennis with uh, Bill Crabtree, and Bill just recently uh, passed away. And uh, those are two guys, uh, Fred uh, leaving Trish with uh, one little one and another one coming. Uh, that touched uh, Julia and I very much. Julia was a sorority sister of Trish's. And I'm going to tell a little story about Fred. Uh, one day, I was walking up the sidewalk uh, on campus, and about 30 yards ahead of me, going in the same direction, was Fred. And I watched him as he walked along. And other people were coming down the sidewalk, going against, you know, we were passing each other. And as each person passed Fred, he called them by name and said hello and spoke to them and had a smile on his face. And everybody knew his name because he knew their name. It was amazing. People who were total strangers to me, he knew their name, and they knew his name. And there was this one fella who, who was passing by, and he actually stopped Fred on the sidewalk and shook his hand and thanked him for doing something that Fred had done for him. And then as he walked on a little bit further and I was following along behind, a real pretty girl came walking down the sidewalk. I can't remember her name, but she was, she was a real college beauty. And she smiled when she saw Fred, and Fred smiled back at her, and he spoke to her, and she just lit up like a Christmas tree when he spoke to her. And as they passed, I noticed that as they passed, she turned around and looked back at him. Fred was an interesting guy. He was a member of the Episcopal religion, the first Episcopalian I'd ever met, and a wonderful guy. Fred Fanning, it was a, there were about eight or nine members of the fraternity that were Catholic. And we had several other brothers that were Presbyterians and other religions. And, and Fred was trying to get a group of us to get together for a church service. And the Baptists would not go to the Catholic church. And the Catholics would not go to the Baptist church. So Fred came to myself and Mike Bearden, who's also in the chapter eternal, and he said, we were both Catholics, he said, you know, Episcopalians are almost like Catholic, but y'all come to the Episcopal Church. And Mike told him, he said, yeah, we'll, we'll come there. We don't have a problem. We're just not going to the Baptist Church. <laughs> so anyway, we eventually had a church service at the Episcopal Church. So that's what I would like for you to remember about Fred Fanning was that, that he had uh, a lot of charm and a lot of charisma. We corresponded, and I began to get letters from Fred saying that he'd been on a lot of patrols and he was tired. Never could seem to get enough rest over there. And then the news came that Fred would be coming back, but not the way we had hoped. Fred, I believe, was the first of our group to go into Chapter Eternal. Freddie, Freddie was uh, probably the youngest, one of the youngest members that was ever a, um, a consul. I mean, he was quite a bit younger than the rest of us. And he was just somebody from the very beginning that we all liked and really admired. We had his service at St. Andrews in Grand Prairie, where he'd been a a member and, and an altar boy, grown up in that church. And St. Andrews was never locked, but his wife wanted Fred to be in the church 
So the Zeta, Eta, Sigma Chi's got together and mounted a 24-hour honor guard. There was someone with Fred for the whole time until the service. And I remember being in there late at night with the candles flickering. And I'd see his wife come in to pray, and it reminded me of how closely Fred's Christian beliefs meshed with the ideals and purposes of Sigma Chi. Fred's letters continued to come to me after his funeral. I think I got four letters after his death. And the last one, there was a wonderful picture of Fred sitting on an ammunition box. He was just as handsome as he'd been in college, and he was holding a small puppy in his arms. And that's the memory I have of him. And one of these days, I plan to see him when we go to Chapter Eternal, and I'm going to go through the pearly gates wearing the white cross.